Next on the news, they walked thousands of miles around the country with the body of Christ. But for one traveler, she called this tent home during the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage. And I brought a real pillow. So this is like all the comforts of home, you see? After months of searching for a kidney, his prayers were finally answered. And this Queens man's match came from an unlikely place. The Vatican is helping the elderly be free from sin. How you too can also get the plenary indulgence. Plus, twin grandmas turn 100 years old. They're thanking the Lord for reaching the milestone. I'm Christine Persichetti. Curazu starts right now. The good news is still being spread around the country. More than 100,000 people participated in the Eucharistic pilgrimage. And while the journey may now be over, those at the National Eucharistic Congress are still talking about their travels across the country. Currency's Katie Vasquez tells us more from Indianapolis. Hi, Katie. Hi, Christine. Well, it certainly takes a lot of planning to pull off four pilgrimages, all those routes across the country. You have to make stops, plan transportation, and also accommodations. Well, one nun really wanted to be a part of this journey, so she found a resourceful way to stay along the route. Take a look. For the past two months, Sister Mary Rose Chin has logged lots of miles in her car. California, Nevada, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, I forgot Iowa, Illinois, and here we are in Indiana. The nun's cross-country trip was for the body of Christ. She was following the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage, driving and walking the St. Junipero Serra route in the West. And when she was tired from the long days... So this is where you've been staying during the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage? Setting up a tent. This, this is, is what Sister guess. Mary Rose has called She's home. Real pillow! She gave so me a tour of her tent, of which home. may be humble for some. The chiggers get a t attracted to this. Is that like one of the... Disadvantages, Disadva yes of camping, yes. But for her, this tent has been a necessary part of her pilgrimage. After hearing about the national pilgrimage in May, the California nun felt called to join, but she couldn't be a perpetual pilgrim because she was over the maximum age of 30. So she decided to join on her own because Sister Mary Rose felt this journey would be a true test of her faith. And that was the point of my conversion when I first came to Mass, that there were all different laws about offering sacrifice, but there was no sacrifice in the different Protestant churches I'd been in. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The and it turned out that time alone with Christ was exactly what she needed. Being able to be in solitude and in prayer, you know, and total dependence on the Lord of what, what's gonna happen and being protected, because a lot of people say, you're by yourself, I'm going, Oh, I've got all the angels and saints in heaven, souls in purgatory with me, you know. After more than 2,200 miles across the country, the she hopes ribbon. others will be as inspired by the body of Christ as she is. The focus really is on Jesus. The Catholics need to be upfront about their faith and not like hide it and share. Sister Mary Rose says staying in a tent is actually more cost effective than a hotel, which on average could cost between $100 and $200, $200 a night. But staying at a campground costs on average $20 a night. And she also said that she stayed with people along the route sometimes if they let her stay over. One night she did stay in her car because the temperatures were below freezing. Christine? Wow, Katie. So what's next for Sister Mary Rose? The plans next for Sister Mary Rose are to actually visit some friends in the South, and then she plans to head back to California. But she says the memories here at the Congress will last her a lifetime. Christine? What an amazing story. Thanks so much, Katie. Thanks, Christine. Be sure to tune in Monday for Katie's final report on this historic Congress. She'll tell us all about its concluding mass, which will be celebrated by Cardinal Louis Tagle, the Pope's special envoy for the event. Join us right here Monday at our usual time, 7 p.m. on Currents News. 
You can get more Eucharistic Congress coverage in this week's tablet. Read about the recent study that shows most Catholics do believe in the real presence of Jesus, the safety measures in place at the Congress, and the tablet's op-ed on the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. So be sure to grab the paper at your local church, and while you're at it, help us support Catholic journalism. Join the tablet's membership program. To learn more about it and see the full list of all the prizes you can get for your generous donation, just go to the tablet.com org slash become dash a dash member. A Queens man who found a kidney donor after months of searching is saying his prayers for a successful surgery next week. We told you Peter Vukulich's story months ago. Just as he started to lose hope, he leaned on his faith and found a match from an unexpected donor. Current News' Katie Vasquez tells us about that life-saving call. I wanted to let you know that if you want my kidney, you can have it. Oh my God. It was a call Peter Vukulic oh waited months for, a kidney donor. It turns out his match, Allison Joyce, wasn't a stranger. We've known each other since high school, um, you know, ran in the same circles. They were friends in high school, but they hadn't spoken in years. Like most friendships, as you get older, uh, you know, and you, you raise your family, um, you know, you see each other in passing and whatnot. Um, so, you know, we didn't, we didn't speak very often. Until Allison heard about his struggles with end-stage renal failure through mutual friends. So I figured this is somebody that I know who I've known for a really long time, and if I could help, I would. On dialysis or three was to do nothing and die. Currents News first shared his story in May as he searched for a life-saving match. Friends and family helped him to put up these flyers everywhere, looking for someone to share your spare. Allison decided to get tested. I've, you know, have always thought like if you could donate blood or bone marrow or whatever to save somebody's life, that if you're in the pro if you're in the position to do so, that you should. This is my daily routine of. Uh, my medicines. Peter hopes Allison will save his life. The Queen's man has been trying everything to stay alive, from medicine to prayers. I made a promise that I wouldn't take them off until the day of the surgery. I always was a, a, a praying man, um, but now it's more of not asking so much, but being more thankful and grateful, just the power of prayer and everybody being behind me. Mm -hmm. And with the grace of God, I'm, I'm, this is where I am now. As these childhood friends prepare for surgery on July 22nd, they are counting their blessings. God is good and you have to remain positive and, you know, put yourself in his hands. It was kind of just shocking that, you know, it, it was that I was a match, but I also just felt really lucky that I was going to be able to help Pete and save his life. In Sunnyside, Katie Vasquez, Currents <laughs> News. The rosary beads that Peter had were a gift from a friend of his mom. He believes they delivered some divine intervention because hours after he first put them on, Allison called him. We'll certainly keep them both in our prayers ahead of his surgery. All right, everyone knows grandma and grandpa can do nothing wrong, but the Vatican is giving grandparents a way to be free from sin. The Holy See is granting a plenary indulgence to any Catholic taking part in the fourth World Day for grandparents and the elderly next week. That means they are free from temporal punishment for their sins. All you have to do is go to confession, receive communion, and pray for the intentions of the Pope. The Vatican also says anyone visiting the elderly or sick can be granted an indulgence. Twin grandmas in Detroit already feel blessed as they recently celebrated their 100th birthdays. Doris Ward and Loris Pryor celebrated the milestone with a party with friends and family. Between them, the twins have nine children and have seen several generations of grandchildren and even great-grandchildren. The two thank the Lord for being able to see their families grow. All I'd say it's a blessing to see him be here at a time to years of life is very precious or I wouldn't be here. It's just precious to live it's wrong. I love their tiaras. Doris and Laura say they always do everything together, including going to the casino. Wow.
That is this current news update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.